Welcome to the first fresh episode of a new series, Engineering Documentaries. In this episode, we will take a look over the general information and engineering aspects of the world's tallest statue, Statue of Unity. So let's get started. So the Statue of Unity is dedicatedly constructed to give a tribute to the Iron Man of India, Sardar Vallabhai Patel. So, the future generations will proudly remember for his contribution to motherland. So, before I going to start the technical explanation of the statue, I just want to give you the brief about Sardar Vallabhai Patel. So, the Iron Man of India, Vallabhai Chaveri Bhai Patel was born on 31st October 1875 and takes his last breath on 15 December 1950. He is popularly known as Sardar Patel. He was an Indian politician and he also served as the first Deputy Prime Minister of India. He was an Indian barrister, a senior leader of Indian National Congress and a founding father of Republic of India who play a leading role in country's struggle for independence and guided its integration into United Independent Nation. Without his contribution, India would never be united as a one nation. The Statue of Unity the world's tallest statue, which is approximately 182 meters in height, was dedicated to him on 31st October 2018. Now we'll see about the story behind the name, height and the location of statue. Let's first see about the story behind the name of statue. So, Sardar Patel was highly respected for his leadership in uniting 562 princely states of India with a major part of former British Raj to form a single union of India so that his statue has a name decided as Statue of Unity. And about height is that Sardar Patel was born in Nadiyad which was a part of Bombay state at that time and today it is now a city in a Gujarat and in Gujarat there are total 182 democratic assembly constituencies so that the height of statue was fixed as 182 meters. Now we'll see about the location of statue. So the location of statue is at 3.5 kilometers from the Sardar Sarovar Dam on the river Narmada in Kewadiya colony, which is 100 kilometers from the southeast of the city Vadodara and 150 kilometers from Surat in the state of Gujarat. So here you can see the exact location of the statue on the map of Gujarat and map of India. And the story behind finalizing the location is after the intention to bring the reality of statue. The big question was that what should be the ideal location for the construction of statue. And finally, the sadhu bait was chosen for it. There are many reasons for choosing this place. Firstly, Narmada river, which is known as the lifeline of the Gujarat because it provides the water to 10,000 villages and 150 towns, which is approximately 14 million plus people of Gujarat. Secondly, it was Sardar Patel's dream to build a dam on a Narmada river. And thirdly, it helps to develop the tribal regions of Gujarat and with these, the project location is finalized. So, this is the site before the construction of Statue of Unity. Artist Ram V. Sutar was hired who is the awardee of Padma Shri and Padma Bhushan for his work in the field of art. His work brings the life to the statue that he works upon. He creates the sculptor of varying sizes by holding every minute details again and again because the final look of the statue is made by shifting through thousand photographs of Sardar Patel. After that, Latest 3D scanning techniques and computer controlled production is used to ensure the accurate reproduction of every minute detail for the bronze cladding of the statue. The key challenge of the structural design was to determine a structural system that could minimize large and undesirable movements inherent to the structure due to the shape and slenderness of the statue's core as well as adequately resist loads due to gravity, wind and earthquake, while still allowing the legs and feet to be seen in the statue. So after considering various options, the system chosen which is comprising of two semi-jointed cylindrical composite concrete cores surrounded by the structural steel space frame to support the exterior cladding. 
the structural steel space frame will attach and to hang from this cylindrical concrete cores. So here you can see the thickness of internal core wall with respect to the statue's height, wherein the podium levels the cores will be connected to the wing walls to distribute the gravity and lateral loads to the foundation mat. So as it is a huge project, so to consider the safety and serviceability of structural design, various international codes taken into the consideration, whereas the structural design was carried out in accordance with relevant Indian standards and in comparison with international standards, including but not limited to IS 875-1987, which provides guidelines for consideration of gravity loads, wind loads, IS 1893-2002, which provides guidelines for earthquake resistant design, IS 456-2000, which is a concrete design code, IBC 2009, which is an international building code, AC 17, which provides guidelines for consideration of loads as per American Society of Civil Engineers, ACI 31808 is a code for concrete design as per American Concrete Institute, AIC 32505, which is a steel construction manual, by American Institute of Steel Construction as well as the reference of the British standard BS 7543 for the durability consideration and Australian New Zealand standard ASNZS 1170 part 2 2002 for consideration of permeable cladding for the structure are used. For the wind load determination, although independent of the final design and wind tunnel analysis, the initial analysis results demonstrated that wind loading and not seismic actions govern the lateral design of the statue. So now let's see the design parameters for wind load which considered as per IS 875 part 3 1987. So basically wind load depends on various factors. So now we'll look over that factors. Basic wind speed as 50 meter per second for Gujarat coastal zones. Probability factor as 1 for general structure. Terrain factor as 1.27 as per terrain category and class of the structure whereas here the terrain is under category 2 that is open terrain with well scattered obstructions having the height generally in between 1.5 to 10 meters and the class of structure is C because structure and their components such as cladding, glazing, roofing etc having maximum dimension that is greatest horizontal or vertical dimension is greater than 50 meter and topography factor as 1 because terrain slope is less than 3 degree. As per Indian standard IS 1893-2002, the statue's site is regarded as moderate seismicity region and is specified as zone 3. Also additionally, the initial geotechnical and seismic hazard assessment classifies the IS seismicity zone as 3. However, the following code plus one philosophy, a zone factor of four, have been conservatively incorporated into the design of the statue. Whereas the key seismic load design parameters are as shown in the table. Seismic zone adopted as zone four, that is as per the code plus one philosophy, so that zone factor as 0.24 and the importance factor is considered as 1.5. Type of soil as type one for hard soil, and response reduction factor R as 3 for ordinary RC shear wall lateral system. Now let's see about the dynamic properties of the structure that is for modal analysis. So the primary lateral load resisting system is two composite concrete cores. So whichever the way core moves, so will be the rest of the statue. The mode shapes and the dynamic periods roughly relate to those buildings of similar height, rationalized for the differences in mass. So here you can see the first three mode shapes and natural periods of the statue. Similar to the tall building, the first two mode shapes are predominantly in translation, with some degree of coupled secondary rotation, while the third mode is in torsion, whereas the secondary rotations in the first two modes are manifestations of irregular nature of the structure. Now, the interesting fact is, in the next 100 years, the Statue of Unity will change its color to green. Let me explain by the example of Statue of Liberty. The panels of the Statue of Liberty are made of copper. So over the time, by the weathering action, copper created a thin layer of copper carbonate called patina. 
although some people were worried that changing the color of statue means it was decaying but patina actually protect the copper underneath from the corrosion so here you can see the timeline with respect to the color of statue of liberty from its first initial 30 years and here you can see the expected natural lagging process for the statue of unity for the next 100 years Sardar Patel was a leader of farmers, so as a part of Loha campaign, iron tools have been collected from the farmers across the India, with the intent of it being it melted and converted into the reba for the use of statues foundation. Thus, the people and in particular the farmers of India will be the integral part of this statue structure. And the iron which is collected from the Loha campaign is used as a rebar for the mat foundation of the statue. Now let's see the overview of the construction of statue. Reinforced concrete cores support the primary and secondary steel trussing and then bronze plates cover the entire structure. Statue has 200 tons suspended tune mass tampers to make structure stable enough to withstand violent wind or seismic activity. The basement of the statue has a big museum which showcased the life of Sardar Vallabhbhai Patel by 40,000 documents and 2,000 rare photographs. There is also the observation deck with the capacity of 200 people at the height of 153 meters from the river level. The construction of monument was completed in mid-October 2018 and the inaugural ceremony was held on 31st October 2018 which is presided over by the Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The statue has been described as a tribute to the Indian engineering skills and also the tribute to the great Sardar Vallabhai Patel. Sardar Patel dedicated his life to the motherland and India would never been united without his understanding of the country's political situation. He was a simple, determined and a true servant of the nation and this is how we remember the great Sardar Vallabhai Patel. I hope you like this video. If you like this video, please hit the like button and for more such content, subscribe to the channel. And lastly, thanks for watching.